Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volvo S80 II. All the kind words that have said about the first S80 and its body are true also in relation to its successor. This car is made to last from quality materials, neatly assembled and perfectly painted. Moreover, the manufacturability of the design is at the high level. Fortunately, here are the paths of big German tree and the Swedish premium have diverged. There is no overcomplications and openly mocking technical solution in Volvo. The climate system is absolutely new, but its characteristics are excellent, northern. Of the minuses, perhaps the decreased reliability of the operation of the drives and the heater fan motor, but now these parts are interchangeable with expensive ones from Mundell. And there are many analogs for any unit. By the way, the same goes for electronics, brakes, steering and suspensions. The trouble with the entire P2 platform, when half of the spare parts exist only in the form of an expensive original, gradually began to recede. The rest of the interior is superior to its predecessor. Better materials, better build quality, more options. There is now famous floating console, and an excellent multimedia system with navigation and a very interesting combined instrumental panel with large displays in the center of the speedometer and tachometer. Most vulnerable parts for time and mileage are the steering wheel and automatic transmission handle. If the skin on them is peeled off, this is a sure sign that the car's mileage is well over 100 or even 2. The rest of the time components resist exemplarily. The cars of the first releases often look no worse than new ones. The electrical system of the car remained reliable, except that the limited resource of the new flank overrunning alt alternator clutches and weak door limit switches will add to the list of standard breakdowns. Still quite often the keyless entry system and the standard signal and fail. Everything else, if it breaks down, is episodic. The system has no glitches, the good hardware and thermal insulation allows the wiring to work in normal conditions without the appearance of corrosion and other problems. In general, in this regard, this is almost an exemplarily premium car, which will not make you regret that you didn't take something simpler. Contrary to popular belief about some particular weaknesses of the Volvo pendants, it almost does not cause trouble. The front is still the same McPherson, and the rear multi-link has become even a little easier compared to the first generation. As usual, you should avoid various active suspensions and only enough the parking brake electric drive. Components with these options can cause a lot of troubles for the owner and are also very expensive. Of course, the Germans, who are accustomed to the prices for the service staff, are not surprised by this, but believe me, the numbers in the documents for payment can be upset. Analogs from Ford cars in catalogs do not beat, but a branded service or a good purchaser can easily help the owner save very large sums. Because the set of compatible components is very large, the resource of the main nodes is more than sufficient, here even the bones go all 50,000. The steering rack turned out to be a bit weak for cars with inline fours and fives under the hood, but it is perfectly replaced by the unlock from Ford. And a much rarer rail from cars equipped with sixes turned out fortunately to be stronger and more resourceful. The power steering pump doesn't have direct replacement, but it is very reliable. If it fails due to a leak in the tubes, then it's okay. Look for a pump from older Volvo motors. Of course, you will lose a little in, in controllability and the old pumps are a little less reliable, but the car will run properly. The brakes work great. No complex fancy systems were installed on the S80. The resource of the discs and pads is quite reasonable. The discs themselves are compatible with a bunch of models and are widely available. Yes, even here are the ABS sensors and their wiring do not break. That's what well-made car means. Only the electric drive of the parking brake fails. Its component located under the bottom of the car can just after a couple of years living in the Moscow. Can junk after a couple of years of living in Moscow. The S80 engines are doing well. The modernized inline fives from the previous S80 remain true to themselves. They are extremely reliable, only the engine suspension and crankcase ventilation systems require attention. And if you change the timing belt and adjust the belt clearances in time, it demonstrates a very solid resource. The choice of fives is now limited only to the 2.5 liter turbocharged version, but in two power levels 200 and 231 horsepower. The bigger naturally inspired versions were replaced with a much cheaper 2.0 Ford engine. The unit is familiar to all owners of Focus, Mazda and small Volvo S40. It is quite resourceful with a relatively reliable chain in a timing drive, but in terms of protection and quality it doesn't reach the Volvo motors. The advantages are cheap parts and a very common design. Besides, it is very lightweight and economical. Practice shows that the resource of the chains is at least 120-180 thousand kilometers, which is very good by today's standards. And the main problems with the sensors and the piston group usually rise with runs over 200. Resource problems of the engine have not been yet encountered on the Volvo S80. They began to install it relatively recently, but one can expect that after the first repairs, negative reviews will appear. 
primarily related to the design of the motor. It has no timing marks, the fit of the pulleys are and stars is keyless, and there are base shifters. A practically trouble-free engine with a very successful timing chain, with a reliable power system and moreover extremely neatly fitted into the engine compartment is a well-deserved favorite for a flagship Saturn. In addition, its power is just like that of a Rolls-Royce. It is sufficient and at the same time surprisingly less than the tax 250 forces. The engine is so successful that it was registered under the hood of the Land Rover Freelander, where it is also respected by the owners. The turbocharged 3 liter engine has 286 or 305 horsepower. The latter is noticeably more powerful and more high torque, but its power is already somewhat redundant, because this is a business setting, not a sports car. For sweetness, there is the V8 of the B8444S series, which seems somewhat out of place in such a car. But everything falls into place if you remember that, that limousines and armored versions are made on the basis of the S80 in Sweden. Plus, the V8 is loaded in the States, which was supposed to be in the main market for the S80s. The engine developed in collaboration with Yamaha appeared in 2005 under the hood of the Volvo XC90 crossover, and it was so successful that in 2012, in 2010 it was used as a base for the Nobu M600 supercharged engine, adding turbocharging and receiving 650 horsepower. The atmospheric version, of course, is weaker, only 311 horsepower, but this is also slightly more than that of the turbocharged inline 6. Motor common weekly BO and has a well deserved reputation of reliable, so little is known about brackets. Traditional supports are often criticized, which can hardly cope with the considerable weight of the unit. They will need to be changed more often than an less displacement inline motors. Plus, the cars of the first years of production had problems with the rapid wear of the balance shaft, but these defects were promptly corrected. A common problem with all motors is a poor cooling system. A very tight arrangement of radiators and frequent fan failures can cause engine overheating with extremely unpleasant consequences. The other diesel engines are represented by two Ford units with a volume of 1.6 and 2.0, very common but far from the most successful. They are not suitable for long runs, especially on such a heavy machine. In addition, the fuel equipment is famous for its troublesome and easy breakdown. At 2.0, pouring nozzles are not uncommon, which must often lead to burnout of the piston. And since the piston group is supplied here only as part of a shock plug, the cost of repair work is usually high. In general, the reputation of these motors is very mediocre, but they also not so bad. They just look pale against the background of the fives of the model design, of the Volvo design. Diesel 2.4 are the flash of the Volvo. Time-tested engines with S60 and S80 of previous generations with some modifications, they are still considered the most successful diesel engines, with a proven design, good fuel equipment and extremely maintainable. Unfortunately, diesel engines are more popular on the V70XC, and on the Saturn they are clearly underestimated, although everything has been done to make the operation of the diesel convenient. Good noise insulation, standard heaters in European trim levers, and the engine itself pulls better than the most gasoline engines. Equally traditionally, the mechanical part of transmissions is not a hassle. There are two servers with manual gearboxes, native Volvo M66 6 speed gearboxes, and newer Ford units of the MM T6 and MTX75 series. Problems can arise only with a 6 speed Ford, the rest of the boxes are exemplarily reliable. I cannot help but note that the flywheels and dual mass are expensive. I can help but note that the flywheels are dual mass and expensive. The rear axle drive clutch on all wheel drive versions is also perfectly tuned. It serves for a long time, overheating is rare, and even its electrical part is well protected. Equally reliable are gearboxes, shafts, and constant velocity joint. In general, damage here is solved possibly only with very tough use. By the automatic transmissions, which are installed on almost all cars, here are the relatively successful ICN TF80 SC series. But the earliest releases and besides the efficiency of its standard cooling system is extremely insufficient. And therefore, there are still complaints about the operation of the transmission, although on average, the reliability of the automatic transmission has greatly increased relative to the situation in the last 80. When operating in traffic jams and frequent movements at high speeds on highways, especially in the case of a combination with D5 diesel engines, it is strongly recommended to use an external automatic transmission radiator. This will avoid overheating and associated twitching of the box and dumping into emergency mode. On this information about the problems of the Volvo S82 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.